heavyweight ladder, we've seen evidence of a kind of split personality. And his first two world title fights were really dramatic evidence of his two extremes. In November of last year, he looked sensational when he went up against WBC champion Trevor Burbick, who chose to stand and fight with Michael and got bombed out early by the Tyson Power. This was a victory that made Mike the youngest heavyweight champion in boxing history. Then in March, he looked lethargic against WBA champion James Bonecrusher Smith, who did nothing but grab and hold for 12 of the dullest rounds in heavyweight championship history. Mike fought just enough to win every round, but it was an embarrassing effort for a young man who says he feels an obligation not just to win, but to create excitement in the ring. And Mike, coming off the Smith performance, were you determined to look impressive against Thomas? Well, at that particular time, I felt like um, Mr. Smith didn't, do, didn't want to do anything but win. You know, after 12 rounds, and I knew that when Thomas came to win back his title, I felt very confident in his spectacular performance. Mike's opponent in his third title fight last month was Pinklin Thomas, a man once considered the heir apparent to Larry Holmes as the dominant heavyweight in the world. He was unbeaten in 25 fights, when he stepped in against Tim Witherspoon in August of 1984 and used his outstanding left jab to dominate the fight and capture the title. Lincoln Thomas showed he had more than just a jab when he went against former champion Mike Weaver and destroyed Weaver with a single right hand. But the bright lights distracted Finkland Thomas and he was very unimpressive in losing his WBC title in March of 86 to Trevor Burbick. It was that title that Mike Tyson won from Burbick, and it was that title, along with the WBA version of the heavyweight championship, that were on the line as Mike Tyson, unbeaten in 29 fights with 26 knockouts, defended against Pinklin Thomas last month in Las Vegas. The third man in the ring, veteran referee Carlos Padilla. And right off the bat, Mike Tyson threw a power punch with the right hand, and right away, Pinklin Thomas tied him up. And again, Thomas, making sure Tyson doesn't do any damage inside. Tyson, of course, had been frustrated in two previous bouts, the one immediately preceding this one, when Bone Crusher Smith tied him up inside, locking his arms down. And Mitch Green had done it the year before in a bout in Madison Square Garden. Low right hand below Thomas' belt, and Mike Tyson was warned by referee Padilla. And certainly it appeared here in round one, Alex, after that good right-left combination, that Tyson was determined to get off to the kind of fast start he had exhibited in his title-winning two-round TKO of Trevor Burke. The important thing is he put punches together. There he, he tried a jab, missed it, tried another one, connected, and then came with another punch. And there, two good body punches. Mike Tyson is, is at his best. He is a devastating body punch. Good left hook. Driving Thomas back into the rope. And right after that left hook, when Thomas is on the rope, a right hand to the body, and then in combination, a left hook to the head. Pickford Thomas tried to to fight back. He didn't run. He's not grabbing at this point. Maybe it's just the Tyson just too active. He's just throwing too many punches. And too strong inside. And now just past the midway point of round one, the crowd at ringside began to anticipate a possible early knockout. And Thomas's legs appeared a bit wobbly. The biggest surprise of this round was the fact that Pinkler did not move more. Angelo Dundee, his trainer, said he was going to show Tyson a lot of lateral movement and confuse him. But here in round one, he just hasn't been able to do so. It was also interesting that he was unable to tie Tyson up inside and force him to stop punching, as had Smith and Green for long occasions. There, a devastating left hook. And again, Thomas backed up against the rope. Two tremendous punches inside, led by the uppercut. Mike Tyson at this point is really fighting left-handed. He's got his right foot forward. He's looking to load up that left hand. He just missed it there. Right uppercut inside. Thomas not holding on here. Perhaps two days to do so. 
so largely as a result of the effectiveness of the left hook used over and over again. Round one was a devastating and overpowering round for the champion, Mike Tyson. When I was 13 years old, and he'd watch me box. The only thing I can remember him saying was that you're going to be the youngest heavyweight champion in the world. Drop down, brown, drag up, fight. In this days and sleepless nights. And one memory that still shines bright. You were there for me. I miss you, Clark. Round two, the round in which Mike Tyson had finished off Trevor Burbick after a similarly dominant round one to take away a title that Burbick had won from this same Tinklin Thomas six months before. So Mike missed two left hooks and then the right hand. A little bit of movement here from Tinklin to start of round two. And you had to suspect that Thomas's concerns entering round two would be number one to move and try to stay away from some of Tyson's heavy punches and two to begin to try to tie him up a little bit inside and the surprising thing here Mike was not as active on the inside as he could have been you see his hands are free there he did not let his hands go with the kind of powerful shot that he did in round one a good Tyson jab that's a jab that he shows all the time in the gym but he has not yet been able to work into his his fight plan in the ring. <laughs> Good body punches again from Tyson. And this time, Thomas began to clinch and hold. But now, Pinklin Thomas was looking for his opportunities to throw the left jab. Not hard punches, but a little bit annoying, a little bit distracting for Tyson. Again, the two fighters laying on each other on the inside at the halfway mark in round two. In round one, Tyson would not have stood there and just pawed with his punches. He was ripping punches then. You heard Kevin Rooney's voice maybe in the background. Push him off, step back. It looked like Mike, the really crowd beginning to boo. It looked like Mike was going to think about pushing back and a good isolated left hook. Early booze from the crowd in that brief period of inactivity, but of course, this was the scene of the disappointing Bone Crusher Smith bout. Tyson there seemed determined not to let it happen again. But at the end of that combination, he looked amateurish. His, fight, his opponent was out of range, and Mike let go a, a wild right hand. Inside. Mike Tyson is not working his way in behind the jab or not letting his hands go. He kind of falls inside and does not let his hands go. And as round two came to a close, the fight had taken on an entirely different complexion than at the end of round one. It no longer appeared that Tyson was headed for an easy early knockout. Questions had arisen. Mike, what caused the change in your fighting style from round one when you're so aggressive and dominant? To the latter stages of round two. Well, you see, after I exerted the engine in round one, I saw every time I hit him with a punch, I was able to hurt him. And then I, I wasn't concentrating. I just take him out. I knew any time I hit him, I can hurt him. And I wasn't really conscious. It was just going any amount of rounds. And I just knew eventually he would tire. And I saw in his last couple of fights, and I would catch him, and he would go. Were you trying to pace yourself? Were you afraid of running out of gas? No, not at all. It's just that um, because I can box 15, 20 rounds, it's just that I was cautious of the heat and, you know, over expiring from the heat. So I just wanted to take my time and just trying to land a shot and get him out there and get him hurt and finish him. Well, the action stayed much the same in rounds three, four, and five. Mike doing enough to win on most of the judges' scorecards. Thomas Jab giving a little bit of trouble. We'll be back in a moment and pick up the action with round six. So as round six began, 
Tyson chased Pinklin Thomas to the ropes and was immediately grabbed for his trouble. Now the burden was falling on referee Carlos Padilla to be more active in controlling the bout. There you saw Mike try to step back and get punching room, but he didn't let his hands go. It was a good idea, though. The kind of thing that Kevin Rooney urges Tyson to do. There are two good punches, both of the body. The body punches obviously do two things. They take the opponent's legs away, and they should create punching opportunities for the head. It was body punching which had established the tempo in round one when Tyson appeared to be close to knocking Thomas out. Now, he tried to take command of the bout with a similar assault. The right uppercut landed on Thomas's chin, and that turned the crowd's booing, which had just begun into cheers. Again, Kevin Rooney from the Tyson corner. Punch out, punch out. And there, the savage left hook. And that punch really was the beginning of the end. And now this flurry of blows dominated by the left hook. Three of them right there, putting Thomas on the canvas. Padilla finished the count. Angelo Dundee entered the ring to say that his fighters should take no more punishment. That was it. Mike, did that fight answer any questions you had about yourself? No, there was never no doubt. There never no doubts in my quality and capabilities and confidence in handling anyone in the world. It's just that I wanted to have a good, spectacular performance in this fight prior to the fight um, two, six weeks ago. Before that. And I was pretty satisfied. I put punches together, and I knew I had to take him out in the sixth round. And every punch was throwing bad intentions. And once I got him hurt, you know, he, he shouldn't even blink or twitch. And once I found out, I just put it all out, and that was it. Well, let's take a look back at the, the crucial punches in that sixth round that led to the first stoppage of Pinklin Thomas in his professional career. And right now, I'm sitting, I'm throwing my jab, and I'm landing to my left when I'm going to throw the hook. Because I knew he was going to drop his, hand, his right as soon as he jabs. And right there, he was in a tremendous amount of pain. You got underneath his jab uh, to throw that left hook. A lot of people said that his jab gave you trouble. Is that accurate? No, not at all. But as you know, he had this, the best left hand in the business. And he could give anyone problems, but I refused to be denied. And I, after I saw I had him hurt, I just put everything together. And the punches he was taking was tremendous. Even though he seems like he's incoherent at the moment, he's was able to get away from some of the punches, but they were just coming in such a concession. Oh, and it was so brave, man. He took those punches. And he left the guy who probably stayed down for the first left hook. The left hook was dominant in that flurry. Let's take a look at your right over uppercut here from the overhead view. As you see, the, the uppercut um, was effective, but it wasn't accurate enough. I just barely grazed them with the end of my, my thumb. Another angle on the sequence of punches that led to the stoppage. Do you have any criticisms of this performance at all, Mike? Anything you want to go back into the gym and try to learn? Well, not, at all, not at all. You know, I let him feel comfortable that he can hold me. But which really, as you really put it to perspective, I could have got out of any one of his clinches. You know, he felt com comfortable, safe, so he stayed safe. Well, of course, an interested spectator here in the ring as we look back at that replay of Tyson Thomas. <clears throat> excuse me, is the man in the tuxedo with the bandage on his eye, Michael Fink. Your reaction to that fight, Michael? Well, I thought it was a, a good fight for Tyson, and uh, I still didn't understand why uh, the public was, was booing the way they were, but I think he displayed a very powerful performance. Now, as you look at a fight like that in your present state of affairs, do you look at it as purely an interested spectator or as a scout looking I, I, ahead? I look at it as an inter interesting spectator. All right, there'll be plenty of time to prepare for Mike Tyson when that fight comes up. And, of course, when we come back right after this, we're going to get to the business of Michael Spinks and Jerry Cooney.
welcome you back to our ring in our ABC Sports studios in New York and prepare now to look back at the fight which was billed as the war at the shore.